Okay, now we have our general journal here uh, for the suspense. We need to now go and show the suspense account, prepare the statement, show a correct net profit, and a corrected balance sheet. So, suspense first of all. So, what I do is I look and see where is suspense mentioned here in my general journal, and I put that into my suspense account. So, first I see a credit entry here of 4950. And it's to do with uh, purchases, so I'll call it purchases. Credit 4950, put it in here, purchases. Uh, 4950. Now, I leave the first line in suspense empty because there would have been a balance in the suspense account. I just don't know if the balance is on the debit or credit side. We'll find that out at the end when we go to finish the suspense account. So I'll leave the first line in suspense empty. I'm looking down here, see does it mention suspense again? I don't see suspense mentioned anywhere else. Uh, down here, suspense 2300, and that's to do with creditors, and it's on the credit side. So 2300, so I'll put that up here. Go back down again and see is there anything else mentioned suspense so 2300 is done and nothing else so there was only two entries in my suspense account so now i can go and finish it and balance it so if i add that that those two there the other side must have been the same so that means the original balance in my suspense account is the same figure is the 25250 so that's my suspense account finished now okay and uh, from my balance sheet when I look at the question suspense was mixed in somewhere else in the question or is it uh, stock including suspense is 54 grand so and that that would have been a current asset so we have 54 grand is balance BD and these will be taken away so the new balance CD is going to be the 54 grand less those so I will have a balance left over in my suspense account so the balance starts off as 54 grand it was suspense including stock so I'm going to rename it as the stock account, which is closing stock. And when I'm finished, I'm going to end up with just purely my suspense. So we have a balance BD of 54 grand. We have those two credit entries. So the balance CD now should be uh, 54 grand here minus these two entries. So that's what the balance CD, the actual figure for stock is going to be. So we know that. So the balance CD is going to be 54 grand minus uh, that and minus that. So 28,750 is my the figure that I'll be later on putting into my balance sheet for stock. So I might as well put that in now. So that's G10. So I over here have way down the bottom. I have a balance sheet. So stock. So the figure that I had in G10, that's the, the, the final balance. So go back through that again. If I have a suspense account and I don't have a balance up here, I knew that that suspense was mixed in with stock. So when I take out my suspense, I'll end up with stock. If I just do a suspense account on its own without stock, uh, I would have deduced the balance by the difference between the two sides uh, at the end. So I would have known there was a missing figure. So originally I would have put debit entries in here to compensate for those two mistakes. So a debit entry of 25 grand would have gone in here. So when I do my suspense, I take out those debit entries. That means I'll put these two credit entries in here. And that means that the stock that originally uh, was 54 grand when the suspense was mixed in with it, when I take those out, that reduces my uh, stock. So that's why the stock is now 28,750. So that's my uh, suspense count done. Next thing I need to do is the statement of correcting net profit. 
So my original net profit, it says here is 37,800. So I'll put that in here, 37,800. So now I go through the whole question. I'm looking for anything that would be uh, an income or an expense account. So I'll add uh, incomes, I'm oh, sorry, I'm gonna add anything that has a credit entry in an income or expense account and I'll take away anything that's a debit entry. So a credit would have increased an income account and if it was a, uh, an expense account, it would reduce an expense account. Remember, incomes and expenses are the only two things that affect my net profit. So that's not an income expense. That's not an income. Purchases is. So purchases has a debit entry in it, so that's going to make my profit smaller because I have more expense. So 12600 uh, for purchases goes in in the less. So that's the first one. Uh, so we dealt with that. Bank is an asset account. Rent is an expense account, six grand. It's got a debit. So therefore that makes my profit smaller. So six grand, and we'll call it rent. Uh, bank, uh, no, that's an asset account. Discount received. A discount received uh, is an income. But I have a debit entry in the income account, which means my uh, income is going to be smaller. And I've got a bad debt there, which is uh, an expense, which is also making my income smaller. So I'll put those two numbers in. So I've got 20 for a discount received. And then I'm going to have bad debts uh, for 20. <coughs> So this one, I've got purchase returns, that's uh, an income account. Restock and charge purchase returns, that's also, uh, that, that's got a debit, so it's going to be less. And creditors is uh, in our balance sheet, creditors is not an income expense. So I need to put in the restock and charge and the purchase returns. Purchase returns is on the debit side. So, uh, sorry, the credit side. So because it's on the credit side, it is an add. And uh, purchase returns was 10 grand, and the restocking charge was uh, a debit. Oh, 100 euro. Quickly check, are there any more? There was nothing else in that. Debtors uh, and drawings are both in the balance sheet, drawings and bank are both in the balance sheet. So that means my if I add um, all of my ads, okay, which is in this case is just 10 grand. So I'll add the 10 grand to my 37,800. And all of these lesses, I'm going to add these together and then take them away from the new figure of 47,800. So my correct net profit then is 47,800. Take away 19140. On that correct net profit, I'm going to put into the bottom of my balance sheet and finance buy. So that is sell uh, D50. Okay. <coughs> now I need to go and do my balance sheet. Now what I find the easiest thing to do here is if I look at the name of the fixed assets and current assets, etc. So uh, I'm just gonna copy the names we already have. So we got buildings, furniture equipment, and motor vehicles. Um, so I'm going to put in the numbers we have here and then as I go through the question I'll change those numbers. So we've got 360 uh, for buildings, uh, 36 and 124. 
So those numbers are probably going to end up having to be changed as we go through the question. <coughs> and back to this, uh, looking at the names that I have for my current assets and current liabilities. So current assets, we got stock, we've already dealt with. We have debtors, and we have cash. So 26 grand for our debtors. Cash is 6,500. Current liabilities, we've got creditors, and we have bank. So bank is, which, and because it's a current liability, means bank is an overdraft. It's money that we owe, and 20 grand for creditors. And we have finance by of net profit, that's our capital. We'll have our net profit and we'll take away our drawings. And so our capital here will be adding, starting off at 560, and we'll take away our drawings and add on the net profit that we've already calculated and see if there's a whole thing balanced. Now at this stage, if it doesn't balance, we're not overly concerned. I want to make sure that we have the technique right. So I look and see have any changes happened to any of the assets or liabilities. So B bound is, Brown is a creditor. So creditors is 13860. We have a credit entry in creditors, which means creditors needs to go up. So we go down to our current liabilities. Credit entry in creditors means more creditors. So 13860 is going to be added on to this. Uh, the next time it said something about equipment, I think in the same one. So equipment 6210. So we're going to add that on and purchase is not relevant. So this is this is going to be added on to furniture. The reason it's added is because it's got a debit entry, assets of a debit entry. So 6210 is going to be added on to my equipment. First one. Now the second one, bank. So bank's got a credit entry, which means that it's uh, it's making my bank overdraft because I currently have a bank bank overdraft. It's going to make my bank overdraft worse, or increase my bank overdraft. So I'll be adding that on as a credit entry. So I have that plus six grand. And I go back up and I've dealt with those two. Now we've got a credit of bank which is making it worse again. Okay, because the credit or bank overdraft is going to go higher again, so I'll be adding on another 400 onto my bank overdraft. Um, so I dealt with purchase returns. Creditors, I've got two entries there for creditors that are on the debit side and I've one that's on the credit side. So that those debits are going to end up reducing my creditors. So I, I add those together, I got 30,300 and then minus 100, so 30,200 uh, I'll put into creditors. 30,200, okay. 30,200. And I'm taking it away uh, because so I had 20 grand originally which is the figure I have over here plus the 1380 from the first entry and minus 30,200 from that next entry so that's my, reduced my creditors by quite a lot um, we stock and charge have dealt with creditors have dealt with that one so this one debtors so we have debtors has a credit entry debtors is an asset so if I have a credit entry, it means my debtors is going to go down by 900. So where are debtors? Debtors is there. So credit entry means 900 less in my creditors, or my debtors. And then we had a drawing, I think, there. So drawings is a debit of 900. So uh, debit increases my drawings. So uh, drawings is down here with my 
balance sheet. So my drawings was listed as I look at this question here. It says twenty six eight hundred was the original figure for drawings. And we'll have another drawing of 900 added into that list. And drawings are a minus, and that's why I put minus symbols in front of that, because they reduce the amount of capital that the, we have in the business. So there is my first drawing. Now we have a second drawing, and we have another entry in bank, making the bank smaller. So the, uh, 1600 is the last entry. So. So we have even more drawings. Again, I'm putting it in as a minus, even though we have a debit entry for drawing because it's reducing our capital. And then our bank, we have 1600 on the credit side, which is making it even smaller again. So at this stage, our balance sheet is ready to be added up. Now, I'm not too worried if this doesn't balance. It may not necessarily, I may have made a mistake somewhere along the way with my adding or subtracting, but you still need to try and make sure you show the examiner you know what you're doing by trying to add up your totals. Even if it doesn't balance, don't give up and don't leave it uh, unfinished. So there's our uh, current, uh, there's my fixed assets added up. I'll add up my current liabilities, my current assets and current liabilities to work out my working capital. So that's all of my current assets there. Now I've got my current liabilities, so I'll add these two. And then my working capital is going to be the 60,000 there minus that figure. And I'll add up the total of my fixed assets and my working capital, and that's going to give me my net assets. So in finance buy, I'll add up everything. So that's the 56 grand, uh, so 56 grand minus two, 29,300 and plus net profit of 28. Uh, and there's a total. So now, if you have time in the exam and you may not, you might want to find out, well, see, is there a missing figure here? And I can see there's a difference here of 3240. I might spend a couple of minutes going through the question to see where I may have left that out, but I suspect what I've done is one of the figures that I have here in my trial balance, I didn't put that number into uh, either a statement of correct net profit or into the balance sheet. But I'm happy that uh, I've shown the examiner I know what I'm doing.